This is Ask Brock. I'm Brock Yorty. This week's question comes from Martin. Brock, we just won a geothermal project where we will be drilling 600 foot holes and grouting them. Any advice? Lots of advice here. Planning, pre-planning, understanding uh, our operational costs of our rig. Obviously you've won this and uh, fuel is going to change in pricing, but let's jump into the drilling program. We need to make sure we have a solid drilling program and understanding all the different formations. I hope you got to drill the test holes, but if not, those first five holes you drill are really going to tell us a lot. Because of uh, geothermal in urban environments and small footprints, we've been coming to this where we've gone from 300 foot holes to 500 foot holes to you drilling 600. I've heard of 1,000 foot holes. And it all comes down to proper tooling, planning, and drilling program for that drilling phase. If you're west of the Mississippi, are we running a hammer? What type of loss zones? What type of fractures? When we get into water table and a water producing formation, are we switching over to another drilling method because we're producing so much water out of the hole? If we're east of the Mississippi and we're running mud, Mud starts doing some odd things from three to 500 feet. And a lot of it has to do with our solids control program, um, disposal, the depletion of, you know, good bentonite and polymers and understanding that we have to rebuild. And that was something that we looked at at Ball State. I would expect a bit trip, you know, Ball State, we did first 100 feet and we cased it off and it was with a tricone. And then we ran a PDC for the next 300 feet. Mother Nature changes a lot from zero to 600 feet in many places in our country. So those are very important things to think about. And it's going to be planning, preparation, and tooling. Now I'm running 600 foot loops into the ground. That's 1,200 feet of coil there. What do I have? How am I running them in? Am I using my rig to set those loops? Solace control is 100%. We're going to want to be under a nine pound mud weight. And yes, I some people out there are going to go, but Brock, we have, you know, 1200 foot of loop that we can fill full of water and that's going to be pretty heavy. But buoyancy, especially at that depth, we're going to have that. What other things can we encounter from gas to, uh, you know, brackish water? Is there something else that could impact our drilling program? Those are all big pieces to this that we need to understand. So then we get the loop in and we have the right tooling so that we effectively can get that loop in and it's time to grout. I'm expecting you're running a dual action piston grouter and start out inch and a quarter trimming minimum, if not a half, inch and a half or two inch. And I know two inch is really hard and rigid and it makes it hard to get down a hole. Again, that loop reel, I'm going to probably have 650, 700 feet max on there. I don't want to have 800 or 1,000 because now as I pump whatever my thermally enhanced grout is, it's going to have to travel all of that time in the loop reel before we start traveling downhole. We need to do our math and understand what our displacement is, keep that trimmy 10 to 15 feet submerged as we're pumping that because that head that's going to be sitting on top of that grout is going to start causing pressures. And you combine those pressures with a dual action piston grouter and you start driving the water phase out of whatever our thermally enhanced grout is and thus becomes not flowable and we start plugging trimmy. And I don't even wanna think about the cost and that aspect. Talking about thermally enhanced grouts, we have to get our trusted drilling fluids engineer or mud salesman on site. And we need to talk about a good drilling fluids program. We need to talk about lost circulation program. We need to talk about depletion of whole drilling fluids. And then it's time to start talking about pumping grout. And we need to make sure we have the right water to material ratio. If this is a sand and bentonite mix, which we're not seeing a lot of as often as we used to, to uh, bentonite and graphite or cement and graphite and it all comes back down to that mix ratio 
so that we have a flowable material that also sets up and becomes rigid. And in panic mode, adding a couple gallons of water to any of those mixes changes their structural capability, their pumpable capability, and can make it so they subside or that they uh, are easier to uh, settle out and plug. And so those are all the things I think of from that complexity standpoint. 600 foot holes are going to be hard. What is our plan? How many do we believe we can drill in a day? This is all gonna come back to, I hope you drilled the test hole, but if you didn't, those first five holes, maybe it's even gonna take the first 10. We need to collaborate with all crews, pay attention, drill them together, and then everybody come up with a plan. This isn't about who can be the fastest on the job site. This is about us being able to competently complete holes and stay on time with this project. I would expect subsidence and grout. There's fractures, there's all kinds of X factors there, and we're gonna have to top off holes. But we should be able to figure out what's there and then be able to slow that type of stuff down too. I'd love for you to shoot me an email, text, call. I'd like to talk more about this. Sounds like a exciting project, but at the same time, it's all about having good processes in place, having the right tooling so that we can set those loops, making sure we have good loop reels for our trimmy, those type of things, and then making sure we've done our math and we understand our displacement and all the rest of the X factors. Good luck. Oh, 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 oh,